good evening to all of you and uh, a very warm welcome to the online program organized by igro relating to the topic finance and accounts for managers friends accounting is a language of business accounting is an art of recording transactions and events and according accounting is a science accounting is a language of business because we are communicating the accounting results through this language of business that is called accounting is a language uh, for communication and it is an art of recording transactions and events and of course it is a science because we are using scientific methods for accounting all of you know the newton's third law of motion every action there is equal and opposite reaction so there is if there is any debit there must be equal credit therefore we are using a scientific method of double entry sure? system a double entry system of accounting that is we are entering the data and we are getting the results based on the scientific method friends we have three rules in accounting rule number 1 debit what comes in credit what goes out example assets or land building furniture machinery etc suppose you purchase a car for rupees 10 lakhs your car is an asset which will be your debit and what goes out is the money or the bank balance therefore there is a double aspects of accounting that is why it is called accounting rule number 1 debit what comes in credit what goes out accounting rule number 2 relating to debit to the receiver and credit to the giver that is relating to person or institution when you are taking a loan and we are getting the money that is your asset bank balance and crediting the person who is giving the loan so the what debit the receiver and credit the giver and thirdly we have debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains uh in this regard we are considering all expenses and all incomes expenses we are debiting and all income we are crediting therefore accounting is based on scientific method it is an art it is a language and we have accounting concepts accounting principles accounting standards there are different standards we are following indian accounting standards and also we are bound to follow international accounting standard or international financial reporting standards since we have various multinational companies having branches outside india there are companies having head office outside india and branches in india for the purpose of consolidation we are required to follow international accounting standard or international financial reporting standards therefore we have to follow accounting rules accounting concepts accounting principles accounting standards and international accounting standards and international financial reporting standards and now let us consider what are the types of accounting i know 
the students who are attending from all over the world as students of Indira Gandhi National Open University. And these students are coming from different fields, science background, medical, engineering, legal, and arts, different backgrounds, students are attending this program. Therefore, I would like to make it very simple to understand the topic called finance and accounts for managers. This topic is very, very important for all categories of students. And this is a compulsory paper for completing this IGNO program. You are required to write the tutor marked assignments. And you are also required to uh, appear for the uh, exam term and terminal end examination. And you are required to present the project report as a part of completion of your MBA program. Therefore, you are required to learn the accounts and financial management for the purpose of completing this program. In this connection, I would like to mention about the different types of accounting. One, financial accounting, two, cost accounting, three, management accounting, four, social responsibility accounting. And these are different types of accounting for the purpose of uh, communication. We are communicating the business results through this accounting language. Before I go to the advanced area of accounting, let me briefly touch upon what is financial accounting. Financial accounting refers to financial transactions and it is based on historical cost or actual cost. With regard to cost accounting, cost accounting refers to cost per unit or cost of total cost or profit per unit or selling price per unit in order to minimize the cost and maximize the profit and in order to fix the selling price. And we have management accounting. Management accounting refers to management information system. We want to know the cash flow statement, fund flow statement, working capital, and all other financial data for the purpose of decision making. And we have social responsibility accounting, social cost benefit analysis. Before you start any project, you would like to know what is the social cost and what is the benefit of this particular project. A study on cost and benefit, that is social cost and benefit out of this project. And we have the, uh, what do you call the, the inflated accounting, inflated accounting, that means under financial manage, financial accounting, we are considering the actual cost or historical value. Whereas in the case of the inflated accounting, inflation accounting, we are considering the market value of assets and we are considering what is the total value based on the market price. So from the actual cost, we are considering the market price. To summarize, let me repeat the different types of accounting. One, financial accounting refers to financial statement, namely the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. Cost accounting refers to cost per unit or selling price per unit. And the management accounting refers to 
management information system or mis and the social responsibility accounting refers to social cost and social benefits and inflation accounting refers to inflated value of assets so with this friends let us consider our first topic that is financial accounting for the purpose of completing this uh, program relating to finance and accounts for managers first we have to consider financial accounting in the case of financial accounting as i told you we are considering the financial statements i say i as i have mentioned the financial statements are number 1 the balance sheet number 2 the income and expenditure account or the profit and loss account today we are going to discuss the financial accounting in detail tomorrow we may discuss uh, maybe cost accounting with regard to the balance sheet we are preparing the balance sheet based on the books of accounts the books of accounts are maintained based on double entry system that is debit aspect and credit aspect or we can say mercantile system or double entry system of accounting from the cash book and journal we are preparing the ledger accounts for the purpose of preparing the ledger accounts we have to enter the basic data that basic data is accounted through the journals cash book is a journal sales register is a journal purchase register is a journal sales return register is a journal purchase return register is a journal and general journal all these are required for preparing the ledger accounts then what is a ledger account a ledger account is a summary of transactions we are recording the ledger based on similar category for example salary salary for the year we are opening a head of account so for example traveling expense traveling expense during the year we are accounting in a particular head of account and we are maintaining separate accounts or ledger accounts for similar type of transactions capital land building furniture stationery traveling expense salary telephone sales purchase all these we are recording on by grouping this similar transactions and that account is called ledger account so once you enter the data you are able to prepare ledger account from the ledger account you can prepare the trial balance so a trial balance is a statement showing summary of all ledger accounts in other words a trial balance is a statement showing all debit balances and credit balances i have already mentioned the newton's third law of motion a equal action to every action there is equal and opposite reaction double entry system therefore when you prepare the trial balance your debit total must be equal to credit total if there is any difference then there is arithmetical error from the trial balance you can prepare the balance sheet and income and expenditure account or you can say profit and loss account so i repeat a trial balance is a statement showing all balances in the ledger account cash book journal 
ledger, everything. From the trial balance, you can prepare a balance sheet. Don't worry, I will explain what is a balance sheet. And you can also prepare a profit and loss account. Therefore, you have debit balances and credit balances. And from the debit balances and credit balances, you are preparing the financial statement. Financial statements are, as I told you, balance sheet and profit and loss account. So, I would like to mention or explain what is a balance sheet. A balance sheet is a statement showing assets and liabilities. A balance sheet is a statement showing assets and liabilities. Probably, let us consider in a statement, there is two sides. Left hand side may be liability and right hand side may be assets. Nothing wrong if you take assets in the left hand side, liability in the right hand side. Absolutely no problem. So, those who are listening me, please understand that a balance sheet is a statement showing assets and liabilities. Any person who is employed in anywhere or who is doing business or who is running a charitable or a religious institution or any institution who is required to uh, take care of the financial transactions should know the importance of balance sheet. That's why I am explaining the balance sheet not only for the purpose of your examination, it is for the purpose of day-to-day -day activities. Therefore, let me start with the asset side of the balance sheet. In the asset side of the balance sheet, we have fixed assets. We have current assets. We have loans and advances. So, let us start with the fixed assets. Fixed assets examples are number one, land, number two, building, number three, other assets, namely vehicles, computer, machinery, etc. So, these assets are called fixed assets. Fixed assets are long term assets. That means those assets which are giving enduring nature or long term benefits to the organization. And we have current assets. Current assets means short term assets. Short term assets, example, cash in hand is a current asset. Cash at bank or bank balance is a current asset. Your amount receivable from customers, which is called account receivables or sundry debtors, is a current asset. Your inventory, for example, your closing balance of raw materials, closing balance of work in progress, closing balance of finished goods, closing balance of tools or spares, all these are called current assets. You have loans and advances, amount receivable from others, amount receivable towards security deposit, amount receivable towards advance salary, advance rent, advance expenses, prepaid expenses. All these are loans and advances. Therefore, in the balance sheet, asset side, you are showing your assets consists of long term assets and short term assets. Long term assets are 
land, building, furniture, machinery, equipments, vehicles, etc. Short term assets are cash in hand, cash at bank, amount receivable from customers, prepaid expenses, security deposit, etc. are current assets and loans and advances. Therefore, the balance sheet showing the balance of all assets including long term and short term assets. Having said this, let me go to the liability side of the balance sheet. In the liability side of the balance sheet, we have to divide the liabilities under two heads. Number one, own fund, that is your capital. Number two, loan funds. And number three, we can consider as short term liabilities. Therefore, in the balance sheet, we have a statement showing your capital, your resource and surplus, that is your funds. The amount invested by you in this business is your money plus the surplus generated out of your business activities will be added to your funds. Suppose it is a company registered under the Companies Act 2013. Then you can say share capital, reserve and surplus. That is what is called your fund. The share capital may be consists of equity share capital or preference share capital. Equity share capital is also own funds. capital is or the difference between preference share capital and equity share capital is that in the case of preference share capital the preference shareholders will have a preferential right over the assets at the time of liquidation similarly the preference shareholders will have preferential right over the dividend when there is a declaration of dividend therefore friends in the case of on funds, we have to consider or equity share capital and preference share capital. I repeat, preference share capital means the preference over the assets of the company at the time of liquidation. And they will also get a preferential right over the dividend compared to equity shareholders if there is a surplus. If there is no surplus, no dividend. In the case of dividend, there is a preferential right. Therefore, own funds, equity share capital and preference share capital plus reserves and surplus. What is reserves and surplus? Reserves and surplus is a surplus generated out of business activities or operational activities, financial activities that surplus will be formed part of own capital. Now we will come to the borrowed capital or loan funds. In the case of loan funds, we have secured funds and unsecured funds. In the case of secured funds, these secured funds are long-term borrowings out of security against the assets of the company. That means the assets are given as security for raising the funds from the markets, maybe from financial institutions or from banks, etc. So the secured funds may be long term funds. That means repayment period may be more than one year or two years or three years, depending upon the terms and conditions. If the funds are payable within a period of one year, we can say short term funds. That means cash credit account with the bank, overdraft account with the bank, or short term borrowings from institutions or individuals, all these are called short term funds. Or secured, unsecured funds 
short time borrowings. Therefore, in the case of borrowed funds or loan funds, there may be secured funds or unsecured funds. Having said this, let me come to the current liabilities. A current liability is opposite to current assets, which means current liability is a liability which is payable within a short span of time. That means within a short period, you have to pay the loan received or the amount payable. For example, I would like to mention the examples of current liabilities. Number one, the amount payable to cust uh, the suppliers of goods or services. The amount payable to suppliers of goods or services. Number two, the amount payable to employees, salary, pension, provident fund, gratuity, all these are called current liabilities. And the amount payable to uh, other expenses, namely rent, electricity, water charges, and uh, traveling expenses, advertisement charges, all these are expenses payable. That is called current liabilities. Therefore, in the case of a balance sheet, I repeat, we have assets, we have liabilities. Assets consists of land, building, furniture, that is fixed asset. Then we have current assets, namely cash, bank, debtors, or other prepaid exp expenses. And we have loans and advances, namely the security deposit, advances given to employees, or other advances, or prepaid expenses, or expense paid in advance. With regard to liability, we have capital consists of on funds, share capital, equity share capital, preference share capital consists of shares divided into different nomination, denominations. And there will be face value of shares. Let us say 1,000 shares of rupees 100 each or 1,000 shares of rupees 10 each or 1,000 shares of rupees 50 each. For convenience, we are dividing the share capital into number of shares and fixing a face value, maybe 10 rupee or 50 rupee or 100 rupee or 1000 rupees, etc. And we have considered equity share capital, preference share capital, and reserves and surplus. Friends, this is what is called a network. What is network? Own funds. That is equity share capital, preference share capital, and resource and surplus. And the rest is loan funds. Loan funds consist of own funds, I mean, loan funds consist of secured loans, unsecured loans. Difference between secured loan and unsecured loan. In the case of secured loan, a loan which is secured against the assets of the company. In the case of unsecured loan, there is no security given. Examples of secured loan, long-term loans, term loans, etc. Examples of unsecured loan may be cash credit or overdraft or loan taken without any security. And we have short-term liability, which is called current liability. Therefore, the accounting system, the scientific method of accounting will give you a result. What is the mathematical equation? The mathematical equation of a balance sheet is asset is equal to liability. I repeat, the mathematical equation of a balance sheet is asset total must be equal to liability total. What does it mean? You are creating an asset and the equal liability you are creating. You see the, the art of analyzing the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, 
you have assets and each asset supported with a liability like uh, substance and shadow what do you mean by that when you are walking uh, in the daytime you can see your shade through the sun when you are walking the shadow will also follow you which means when you are creating assets the liability will also follow you i hope you are very clear about this concept you see the importance of balance sheet i repeat you are as creating an asset land building furniture machinery stock that is receivable etc equivalent to that not less not more you are creating a liability what is that liability this asset may be created out of own funds or loan funds suppose you are creating this assets out of your own funds you are not accountable to anybody you are accountable to the shareholders only no external liability therefore you are safe if you are making loss it is your loss your owner's loss now consider a situation where you are creating an asset and your own funds is very less and borrowed money is more and you are creating a loss you are entering into a loss then what will happen your capital is very less your loan is very high and entire asset is created out of borrowed money what is happening friends in the case of borrowed money you are liable to pay interest whether you are making profit or not your borrowed funds are subject to interest burden that means your huge interest is accumulating and you are accumulating huge loss and imagine a situation where your capital is not sufficient enough to to absorb the losses then what will happen your capital is zero or minus and your loan is more than your assets that means you are not in a position to liquidate your loan by liquidating your assets at that point of time you can say you are bankrupt that means your borrowings are more than the value of your assets consider the situation of government of india every year government of india is providing the budget to the people of india in this budget government is borrowing money for the purpose of meeting the welfare measures infrastructure education health etc how it is possible they are reducing the deficit by compensating with the capital borrowings this capital borrowings are increasing every year that means they are not repaying the loan only taking loan and paying interest what is happening when you are repaying the loan your loan will get reduced suppose you are only paying interest and that interest is paid out of borrowed money i repeat you are availing loan that loan is a capital borrowing and for the purpose of reducing your liability of the earlier years you are borrowing further and that further money is sufficient enough to pay the interest only not the original principal amount then what is the situation this loan amount will increase you are repaying the or you are paying the interest out of further borrowings 
That is what is happening in the case of government of India. That means if you consider the total value of assets of government of India and total liability of government of India, your liability is two times than the assets. In that situation, your assets are not enough to liquidate the liability. Why we are not feeling this in India? Because the money is circulating every year. So nobody is bothered about the borrowings, even in the case of state government, Kerala government, etc. Every year the borrowings are increasing and probably the assets are increasing. But main expenditure out of budget allocation is for salary payment. That means the salaries to the government employees are a huge burden with regard to the budget, budget allocation. Therefore, the importance of balance sheet I am highlighting by stating that every institution should know what is their financial position. That is possible only by preparing the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, you are showing the assets, you are showing the liability. When you are approaching a bank for a loan, they will always assess your balance sheet, whether you are having the capacity to repay the loan and whether your balance sheet is in a situation where your assets are uh, properly accounted, your assets are properly valued, whether your assets are sufficient enough to repay the loan, whether you are able to repay the loan over a period of time, whether you are utilizing the money for the purpose of repayment of other loan. All these are possible only by analyzing the balance sheet. Within the short span of time, I have given you an overview of the balance sheet. As a student of MBA, you must study what is a balance sheet. With this, I must repeat, a balance sheet is a statement showing assets and liabilities. Right-hand side assets or left-hand side assets. Right hand side liability or left hand side liability, the assets must be equal to liability. In other words, we can say the asset is equal to own funds plus borrowed funds. Therefore, the net worth is equal to own funds plus reserves and sur surplus. In other words, your net worth is equal to total assets minus external borrowings. Suppose you are liable to pay salary to employee. It is a borrowing from employees. It is an external liability. So this is what is expected from you to understand what is a the balance sheet. I repeat, a financial statement consists of two statements. One is the balance sheet. Other is the profit and loss account. So balance sheet will give you the financial position, the assets value, liability value, what is your capital, what is your borrowings, what is the amount invested in long-term assets, what is the amount invested in short-term assets. In today, even without knowing the double entry system, the accounting software will give you the result. That's why you are not learning the, in the journal entries or double entries in detail. Because after uh, studying the financial statement, once you enter the data, you will get the results. What is the result? The trial balance will be auto-populated. The balance sheet will be auto-populated. The profit and loss account will be auto-populated. Without knowing the accounting entry, you will be able to get the result. But if you don't know the analysis of balance sheet, if you don't know the analysis of profit and loss account, 
it is very difficult for you to take a decision it is very difficult for you to know the financial position therefore understanding the balance sheet is very very important now before we go to the errors and omissions let us consider the next statement which is called a profit and loss account a profit and loss account is a statement showing the income and expenditure that is the revenue receipts or revenue income and revenue expenditure therefore for the purpose of preparing the financial statement you are required to prepare the details of revenue expenditure and capital expenditure the details of revenue receipts and capital receipts in the case of expenditure we are dividing the expenditure into two parts one capital expenditure two revenue expenditure example of capital expenditure is the land building furniture machinery etc the examples of revenue expenditure is salary rent electricity water charges purchase and other expenses therefore capital expenditure is an expenditure for long term benefit whereas revenue expenditure is an expenditure for day to day expenses therefore in the case of capital expenditure you have to show in the balance sheet asset side in the case of revenue expenditure you have to show in the income or expenditure side or income and expenditure statement in the expenditure side which is also called a profit and loss account in the case of business we call it as profit and loss account in the case of charitable or religious institution we call it as income and expenditure account let us consider a business organization and we are considering a profit and loss account in the profit and loss account there are two sides the left hand side is the expenditure side right hand side is the income side in the expenditure side the revenue expenditure or day to day expenditure will be shown i repeat the examples like salary rent electricity water charges provident fund uh, stationery telephone advertisement all these are revenue expenditure or day to day expenditure or current expenditure whereas capital expenditure is land building furniture etc which is to be shown in the balance sheet now we are going to consider revenue receipts and capital receipts the receipts are divided into two category revenue receipts are recurring income repeated income or short term receipts whereas capital receipts are the share capital or long term borrowings therefore the long term borrowings or share capital will be reflected in the balance sheet liability side whereas the short term income or short term receipts namely sales or commission or discount etc all these things will be shown in the income side of the profit and loss account therefore in the income side short term receipts expenditure side short term expenditure now friends what is net profit the net profit is the difference between the total income minus the total expenditure suppose the income is 100 rupee and the expenditure is 80 rupee net profit is equal to 100 minus 80 is equal to 20 rupee that 20 rupee profit should be shown in the balance sheet in the liability side along with your own funds friends please note the difference between 
the cap income and the expenditure. Suppose 100 rupees is the total income, 80 rupees is the total expenditure. Difference of 20 will be shown as net profit transferred to balance sheet along with the capital that is resource and surplus. That is why we call it as resource and surplus. In other words, suppose the income is 100 rupee and the expenditure is 120 rupee, then expenditure is more, income is less, difference is 20, that is to be shown in the balance sheet as surplus along with the share capital or partner's capital account or proprietor's capital account. So the importance of profit and loss account is to know whether the institution or the organization is making profit or loss. Therefore, the profit and loss account is a statement showing profit or loss from the business operation. That profit will be shown in the balance sheet as surplus. Therefore, a balance sheet is a statement of affairs or financial position. A profit and loss account is a statement showing profit or loss. Without knowing, without preparing this financial statement, it is very difficult to understand the status of the organization. Therefore, this statement is very, very important. Having said this, let me explain to you the importance of the maintenance of documents supporting the business transactions. I have mentioned that asset is equal to liability or capital plus long term capital plus borrowings is equal to asset. That is a mathematical equation. An equation is standard. Balance sheet is standard. Income and expenditure or profit and loss account is also prepared. Trial balance is prepared. Trial balance is tallied. Asset, I mean, debit is equal to credit. Balance sheet, asset equal to liability. Now the question is whether the accounts are correct or not. Are you satisfied with the accounts of having tallied balance sheet? The answer is no. Even if the balance sheet is tallied, we can call it as it is arithmetically correct. It is arithmetically correct. That means asset equal to liability. Whereas there are so many transactions where not supported with the documents. There are so many transactions where it was not properly accounted. There are so many transactions where the transactions were not in complete, for example, the balance sheet is tallied. The asset is equal to liability. Suppose your income by way of a sale, let us say 1000 rupees is the sale value. And you have issued a invoice for rupees 1000. And in your books of account, you have ended only 100 rupees. Your voucher or the sale bill shows 1000 rupees, whereas in your books of account, it is only 100 rupees. Instead of 1000, you have shown 100 rupees as income and your cash 100, sale 100. Your trial balance is tallied, balance sheet is tallied, everything is tallied, but actual transaction is 1000. Therefore, friends, there is a difference of 1000 minus 100 is equal to 900 rupees shortage. This is not reflected in your accounts. It is possible only after verifying your sale bill, actual transaction. Another example I can say that your expenses, 
may be 1000 rupees and you have accounted in the books as 10000 rupees 10 extra extra your voucher shows 1000 rupees whereas your books of account shows 10000 rupees the expenditure is 10000 and the cash goes 10000 from your cash box there is a shortage of 9900 rupees whereas your actual expense is only 1000 but you have accounted 1000 as uh, 10,000 rupees. So, 9,000 rupees is an uh, excess payment made which is not actual payment. Therefore, the person responsible for maintaining the cash is getting that money from the business. This is what is called uh, the errors of commission. There are cases where errors of omission, there are cases where compensating errors one account is compensated with another account therefore errors and omissions are possible even if the accounts are tallied that is what is called errors of omission errors of commission and compensating errors friends is it a small thing is it an important matter that is what we have to consider. See, I have mentioned you 1,000, 10,000, etc. There are cases where the transactions are on a high value, wherein there is no proper reconciliation done. Therefore, when there are compensating errors, which are due to intentional or due to oversight the intentional error is a fraud my dear friends intentional error purposefully done the, you might have heard about the satyam computers cases etc it's a very important uh, case law in the history of our india there are compensating deposits and these deposits were adjusted against a customer's account and as far as the company is concerned there are fixed deposit with the bank and these bank balances were not properly reconciled or not confirmed from the bank directly even without deposits in the bank account, the account shows deposit in the bank, where actual deposit was not there. In, you can see the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, asset side, bank balance. Bank balance may be savings bank account, or fixed deposit account, or current account. In the fixed deposit account, there is bank balances. And suppose these fixed deposits were not touched or not reconciled, not confirmed from the external evidences from the bank. And it is continuing for a long years, assuming a situation. And these deposits were already withdrawn, my dear friends. Deposit in the bank, crores of rupees were withdrawn and diverted into various real estate transactions. Whereas in the balance sheet, there is a bank balance. Actual balance was not there. Suppose there is a reduction in deposit. The corresponding reduction will be adjusted in the sundry creditors or suppliers account. Suppliers for services suppliers for goods so in the asset side there is an increase or deposit in the liability side there is an equal amount of deposit asset increases liability increases asset decreases liability decreases suppose the asset is 
not actual asset and the liability is not actual liability what will be the situation the asset value is not there that means it is a loss to the company therefore friends the balance sheet is tallied trial balance is tallied that doesn't mean that the accounts are correct so the account should be supported with the documentary evidence what is documentary evidence documentary evidence for all receipts and documentary evidence for all payments receipts may be capital receipt or revenue receipts expenditure may be capital expenditure or revenue expenditure in the case of receipts there must be bank entry there must be supporting receipt document in the case of expenditure there must be internal evidence there must be external evidence external evidences are the external bills or vouchers internal documents are internal vouchers therefore all these documents are very important and the genuineness of documents are also very important it is not enough to satisfy with the bank statement alone a direct confirmation from the bank is also required therefore as a student of mba please understand the importance of this financial statements in your day to day life so uh, we have discussed what is the meaning of accounting what are the different uh, concepts what are the different principles what are the accounting standards international accounting standard indian accounting standards and we have also considered the different uh, methods of accounting namely the financial accounting mm -hmm. namely the cost accounting namely the management accounting namely the social responsibility accounting namely the inflation accounting and later on we have considered the trial balance the financial statements namely the balance sheet and the profit and loss account as a first day of our class on ms4 let me conclude today's class uh, and tomorrow we will continue with the financial statements and cost accounting with this let me conclude good night